Welcome to 15th century Bohemia, where civil war runs rampant across medieval Europe, and clashing steel and armor is just part of day-to-day -day life. Here to talk about all things Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is international PR manager from Warhorse Studio, Toby Stoltzvilling. Welcome! Hello, thank you for having me. You brought... Uh, you came bearing gifts, somewhat. This is the collector's edition, which was just revealed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's clearly very impressive that these two are not included, unfortunately, <laughs> but a lot of stuff is included. Can you kind of show us what uh, comes in the box? Well, it's very precious, so I took my guard. I, <laughs> I see your guys' eyes here, but hey, uh, it's, it's a collector's edition, of course, with the great stuff in there. However, all those items are actually uh, have some um, connection to the game. So, of course, Henry on a horse, Pebbles, right? Uh, the main character of the game with exchangeable weapons. So either you have the San George here killing the dragon. Well, there's no good dragon in KCD, of course. <laughs> but if you if you want to do that, or rather have Henry with a little sword, that's cool. However, this letter here uh, also has some. It's not some. Hey, thank you for having us and thank you for buying the collector's edition. That's actually a letter. You know, in KCD one, the game ends with you getting a letter which you are supposed to carry to that castle and ask the lords if they're on your side or not. Um, in KCD2, you still have that letter, but in the beginning, everything goes south, you lose it. You theoretically know what's inside, but you never open it. However, if you have the collector's edition, then you get the real deal, the real letter, oh, and you will right. actually find out what the lords uh, of, of Ratai and so on, what they actually want from you. Oh. No spoilers! No spoilers! Get it yourself! I love that, it's kind of like an invitation into the yes, game almost. absolutely. And of course, last but not least, a map of Kuttenberg, Kutna Hora, because that one, is the big addition to Kingdom Come Deliverance. And also, it was the biggest challenge to put in the game because it has thousands of NPCs there you, with daily cycles You built a and city. It's, Absolutely. It's a <laughs> impressive. Uh, I, also, what's the... Is there a lock on there? <laughs> well, there's... There's a love and hate relationship with our lockpicking mechanism. So I said, hey, you know what? Let's put a lockpicking mechanism on top. Don't worry, everyone. Right? You don't have to put out your lockpicks and start to, to do something there. It's just like a... Like a memento. Of I love it. <laughs> this is a very thoughtful times, collector's yeah. edition. Now let's take a look at the game itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, just just showed off gameplay very recently. This we've got a, I believe, in a, a, a chunk of it to check out here. Uh, set the stage. What's going on for, for us here? What's going on? So first of all, we are seeing here something is going on. They want to hang someone. Actually, someone from uh, the Devil's Pack. Because in KCD2 now. Henry is, can't deal with the things himself anymore. He needs a group of friends. In case of one, you're pretty much alone and just dealing with local nobles and, and, and bandits and I don't know what. In case of two now, you're going on the bigger stages where kings are involved, where armies are involved. And Henry, I sometimes say that in KCD1, Henry was the champion of the Sunday League, and now in KCD2, he's like supposed to play in the Premier League, but, well, he knows the sport, but he needs to learn more and get bigger and better, and he will quickly realize that he needs France and that he needs a gang to push everything forward. And the poor fellow we saw there is Komar, or Mosquito, and he was didn't look that well, but let's see how that's going on. Now, we've got the map pulled up here. How, how big is this compared to the original? Well, that really depends. I mean, we, we, we say twice the size. However, it, it depends which numbers you're uh, comparing there. But generally, two big maps. One is a tiny bit smaller. One is a tiny bit bigger. One is more countryside, as you can see here. Deep forests, huge sandstone formation, really wonderful. This reminds us a little bit of KCD1, of course, because someone said that we have the nicest forests, uh, forests there are in, in video games. But the second map is the one that will invite you to uh, Kutna Hora, which is today a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And that will be more industrious. There will be uh, silver mining going on, the armies and the kings and everyone will be there. Now we have some we have some <laughs> gameplay a little further on that's going to show all the mm -hmm. NPCs and how they how they interact with Henry. Uh, but what's uh, what's going on right now? What's like mm -hmm. I guess what are we what are we doing in town right now? Absolutely. So this is one of the earlier quests in the game where you have to find a few guys which uh, you heard they're here somewhere around this this pub playing dice with the local people here. However dice and any sort of uh, uh, gambling, so of course, is a problem today, was a problem back in the time, so he got into some trouble with these fellows here, and they will tell you, hey, yeah, yeah, we know where you do this, just follow us in a few seconds, he's right, ar uh, right around the corner. Uh, the point is that uh, the, the game is a tiny little bit more talkative, let's say, right? You, everyone has a lot of things to say, however, you can't skip those things. You don't have to do that, you can, you can delve into it, but there's always a way how to get to the end really quickly, and we are now trying to find that guy that owes us. Okay. Now, it's a role-playing game. Choices matter. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that. Tell us about the branching path and player choice here. Oh, yeah. So, 
in Cassidy, it's really not about the hundred different endings or whatever. The point is how you get there. That's important, right? Every quest, not every, most of them, many of them, can be solved in different ways. That means, well, Spartacus sword ahead or uh, a speech dialogue, uh, speech skill, and so on. Well, of course. That's not unique. Other games have this as well. However, your choices will absolutely and will change the outcome of the quest and the way how they play through. You, for instance, you spare some dudes that are apparently trying to attack you and kill you. But you don't know who they are. You spare them. They run off. And later in the game, you might meet them and they might actually help you because those guys weren't bad. They were just... Mis it, was sure. a, it was a bad mis mis misunderstanding. However, if you cut them right away, then of course they will be gone and so on. But these are the small ones. There can be big things, moral choices, where Henry really decides who lives and who dies, and now, that's big. It, it looks like Henry's gotten himself in, uh, well, in deep doo-doo, actually. Uh, <laughs> tell us about this. What's, uh, where, where are we? Uh, we? Well, we found that dude that owes us, and we were apparently not the only one who, who he owed to. So he said, yeah, we have that dude here who sank in pig shit, unfortunately, <laughs> behind the local <laughs> pub. So uh, poor, poor Henry had uh, to crawl uh, through the doo-doo and get him out there because uh, he had something on him, a precious bow, and the dudes want the bow, but Henry is like, no, 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 guys, I went through the doo-doo. That's my uh, precious element now, and in a few seconds, uh, combat will start. Now, do you need to have played the first game to jump into this one? We tried extremely hard, and I hope we nailed it, to make sure that uh, you absolutely not, do not need to know anything about Kingdom Come Deliverance in order to enjoy the f uh, second game. In the beginning, we tell you the bare necessary information. This is you, that's your friend, this is the letter, that's the castle you have to go, good luck, have fun. The rest is coming with uh, um, 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 nightmares Henry is having, some they're, they're in, in, in dialogues that will tell you, hey, listen, how did this and that turn out and so on, and these things will be slowly but steadily brought to you, never with fist in your face, but really smoothly, so that even old fans of, of the genre of KCD will not feel like, oh, dude, I, I saw that already, I'm, I'm bored. Very nice. Uh, full disclosure, I, uh, I checked out the first game I'm very early in it, but the second one is what got my attention, so I'm doing a little bit of research ahead of time. But let's let's talk about the combat here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, we are still trying to depict the uh, uh, historical martial arts from, from uh, Central Europe or uh, Middle Ages in, in, in Europe generally. And we had real sword fighters in the studio and, and mace fighters and so on who showed us how it's supposed to look like. We told them why this is not possible in a video game because you need those broad moves and everything. But still, I think we have a very good compromise and the closest you can get to actual sword fighting. However, in KCD1, people said, some of the feedback was it's easy to learn but hard to master. We master. We, we, we nailed the hard to master, the easy to learn, not so much. So in case you two, like with everything else we did in the first part, we smoothed it out, made it nicer and just easier and more accessible. So even the combat was rewent. It's still an evolution, not a revolution. It's the same as it was before, just more accessible with more options to choose from. The, the choice is a big part of this, and we're seeing some of the different ways you can approach stuff in this uh, montage right here. Uh, we got a glimpse of a crossbow. We got some stealth. We saw a firearm. Absolutely, uh, and you, we also saw that it can go super south when you're like in the in the stocks there. So the early gunpowder weapons are something that became slowly but steadily popular on, on medieval battlefields around 1403, a bit earlier, a bit later. So this is something that we also added to the game. However, KCD is not becoming a shooter all of a sudden. Very important. <laughs> it's still an RPG which focuses on melee combat. However, those super weapons, uh, let's call them super weapons, is more something like a ultimate weapon, right? You can. You fire once, you kill him in one shot, and then you switch to your uh, melee weapon and go ahead. And we, to make this a little bit easier, we uh, made it easier also for players to change weapons in combat and so on, that you can really have kind of sets that you can pre-prepare and so on to make it just more smoother and feel better. Now, uh, what's Henry up to? We just saw him. He was in. Uh, he, he got he got covered in uh, pig excrement. What is what is that? How does that affect his reputation and his experience? The so the goal is that all the NPCs in the world are living and breathing of. They have, they, they do something, they go somewhere, and they will react to you as well. So if you are covered in pig mm -hmm. excrement, then um, 
they will react to you. They will say, dude, you stink, or stealth will be harder, or they, the, the uh, speech skill will be harder to, to pass, and so on. So these things really uh, affect you, and you as Henry, or you as the gamer, have to then take care of yourself. Don't be afraid. This is not a survival game all of a sudden as well. It's like these little elements there, the details that make this game so great and so immersive, because that is what we want, actually. You see on screen that Henry is going through doo-doo, so of course he's supposed to be dirty and stinky and whatever, and needs to take care of it. So, where do you go? Bathhouse. What are the different the different options here in the bathhouse? <laughs> we, we don't have to go into that right now, I suppose, but it's a, it's a mature game. Uh, I want to talk about the historical accuracy, because it's, this is a, I, I get the sense you've done a little bit of research into how things used to be. Absolutely. So, uh, everything we do is based on, well, we want to make it as authentic as possible. So, this is still not a simulation, and this is not a 100% realistic, that's exactly how it was. It's the closest we can get in the limitations we have creating a video game. And that is what we do, first and foremost. But we have a full-time historian on the team. She's working with museums, uh, uh, the, the mayor of Kuttenberg himself, uh, reenactors, uh, universities, and so on, and gather this information from those people who know this infinitely better than us. And then together we're coming up with the best possible compromise to still be fun, interesting gameplay, and so on, and push it everything forward. So yeah, we're trying to make it authentic, but keep in mind it's just a video game. Now, it's also a very cinematic video game. I appreciate that you know, it's all first person, but then it, we get to see Henry from the outside. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, absolutely. I, I think, uh, well, it's an, of course an action RPG, but the, the story part, the epic story that we are trying to tell, to tell there is, in my opinion, the, the, the bread and butter of the game. That is, it's like a playable... Netflix series or something like that. Really, it's it's really epic. You, you can you can change the outcomes. You can have your impact in that. You can see how it everything turns out, and it's full of cinematics and cutscenes, of course, to make this interesting, make it uh, uh, awesome, and give you this feel of this bombastic, epic experience you can have there. So that's a, definitely a big thing. Now, tell us a little bit about uh, Kuttenberg. How much mm. time will uh, Henry spend getting to know the city, and what kind of adventures are we going to? Kuttenberg was definitely the biggest challenge for us uh, as a team. It has hundreds of buildings, thousands of NPCs, so we've never done anything like that. And for the guys who played KC1 and maybe can remember Ratai, well, Ratai is just a street in Kuttenberg, so this is like, that was a huge thing for us. And Henry, of course, and it's occupied by the invading king, so danger is everywhere around. It's a huge medieval city that is uh, a silver mining town, so it's rich, so there's riches to go and find, adventure to find, and a lot of side quests, mini games, dark alleys, and as I said, the king is, uh, the invading king is sitting there right now, and as you are part of a guerrilla force, Ooh. maybe you have to do a lot of guerrilla tactics there. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, Toby, thank you so much for joining us. Step into the greaves of Henry of Scarlets when Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 comes to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles, and PC on February 11th, 2025. Coming up next, a look at a few more games in the Play On family, including Undisputed, Akimbot, and Nobody Wants to Die.